how many references to my earlier games can you find in this room? Uh, this is something I asked Chris to do. It's not something I asked him to do. He kind of did it on his own. Uh, you'll see the Shiva poster um, kind of in the foreground there. It's a very low-res version of the, of the Shiva poster. One of my early, early, early designs of Rosa is sitting there on top of the, uh, on top of the closet. Uh, the Kiss poster, which was seen in uh, Two of a Kind, is on this wall. Um, Although, I guess that's not really a, a two-of-a-kind thing. Anyone can be a KISS fan. Uh, so yeah, um, references. Yay, gotta love them. Before you discount Kelly as being a horrible, horrible, nasty bitch, uh, I want to let you know that I based a lot of Kelly's uh, observations and annoyances on my own experience in college. I shared a room with a guy, uh, and Michael, if you're listening to this, you know, um, you're awesome, but this drove me nuts. Uh, I shared him with a guy who was so social and a heck of a lot more social than I was. And I, not that I was antisocial, but I would do all my socializing outside of the dorm room. I wanted to hang out with people, I would leave. When I wanted to relax and be alone, I would come back to the dorm room. This guy uh, would leap, open up the door, turn on the radio, invite the entire world in. It would drive me nuts, and I turned into Mr. Sourpuss Grumpy Face because I'm like, I just want to be alone. And I was, uh, so a lot of Kelly's uh, anger towards her roommate was based on my own experiences. If anyone ever gets stuck in Blackwell Legacy, it's here. And there's a reason for that. Uh, in order to solve this puzzle, uh, it's required that you have spoken to Joey on a very specific topic earlier in the game. Uh, you have to go back to Rose's apartment and talk to Joey about his special abilities. And a lot of people didn't do that. And so they get stuck here and they look online for a walkthrough. And the walkthrough says to tell Joey to use his power on Kelly's papers. And they're like, well, how do I do that? I don't know how to do that. The option doesn't come up to do that. It's because they didn't talk to Joey about that specific thing. So, uh, the walk so I guess the lesson here is that you can't always trust the walkthrough. You sometimes have to use your brain to figure things out. It's funny, knowing about the future Blackwell games, my first instinct on how to solve this puzzle would be to just switch to Joey and blow on the papers. Uh, but in Blackwell Legacy, um, you couldn't control Joey. And uh, that obviously changed in future installments. I enabled uh, the player to control Joey. You could switch between both of them at will. And I thought about, well, while doing this revamp, well, hey, maybe I'll add the ability to switch to Joey. But I'm like, nope, 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 nope. I didn't, uh, I don't want to play George Lucas. Uh, some small superficial changes, fine, but nothing, nothing groundbreaking. So uh, I kept it as it was. I actually saw a doodle almost exactly like this um, somewhere. You know, I, I don't remember where it was exactly. I just remember seeing this doodle, and it was almost this exact same thing. Um, you know, the three stick figures of three girls, uh, two at the top had a guy next to them, and one of the guys was crossed out. And then at the bottom, the, the girl said, so many men, so little time. And I just looked at these three pictures, three stick figures and it's like I got the three personalities or I just learned enough about these three girls like to kind of develop little um, I don't know uh, personality profiles and I always thought it was a nice way to give information about characters without having to do a lot of work basically uh, this this little picture tells a lot about Joanne Susan and Allie and in a way these three girls are very much cliches uh, they are a little one-dimensional Joanne is the smart one, Susan is the quiet one, and Allie is the pretty funny one. However, uh, since Susan is drugged out in a mental asylum, Joanne is dead, and Allie is a ghost in a park, I figure their, their one-dimensionality uh, it won't bother people too much. So uh, I think I can forgive myself for not giving them too much of a personality. I remember even five years ago when uh, creating this scene and, and seeing these two ghosts in the scene that they just didn't look very good. Uh, they just don't look very good in daylight. Uh, in a daylight scene, ghosts just don't look good. Uh, I tried playing with the transparencies. I tried doing all sorts of stuff. It just they just didn't look good. And so there's a reason why all the future Blackwell games take place at night. Uh, Convergence has some scenes during the day. But uh, the sky is deliberately kept very cloudy and dark and moody, so uh, you don't. It, it, they so they, the ghosts look cool uh, in exterior shots. So I guess you will not be seeing many bright sunny days in future Blackwell games. Hey there, remember me? No, maybe. 
for a lot of this commentary, I keep talking about things that I've done wrong and things that I would have done differently and things I regret doing five years ago or things that I just have mistakes that I learned from. But uh, I, something about this character, Allie, I did something very right because a lot of customers have told me that um, I took some scenes from this uh, section and I put it in the trailer, the original trailer for Blackwell Legacy. And a lot of customers have told me that it was uh, Allie's moments in the trailer that convinced them to buy the game. <laughs> so there's something about Allie here that uh, resonated with people. Uh, and even though with, through my complete lack of experience, uh, I did something really right here. So for that, I'm very glad. Here's something interesting. That uh, line you just heard Rosa say was the very last line of Rosa's that I imported into the game. So I figure it would, uh, this would be a good opportunity to talk about the whole voice uh, recording thing. Um, holy crap, is it a pain in the neck. Um, voice recording uh, is a whole, a whole lot different than doing non-voiced. Because uh, number one, you have to make sure you record everything, and if you don't, you either have to, to fudge it using dialogue you already have, or drag the actors back, and neither of them is a desirable situation. Or uh, you could do what I did with Shiva, which was to um, just have a text narration. And I miss the text narration um, from Shiva because it made it so much easier to, to fudge it. If I forgot to record some dialogue, I could just you know, uh, put a little text narration up. Uh, I don't know if you remember the bartender in Shiva, but the bartender in Shiva doesn't say anything. That's because I, I never recorded the dialogue that the bartender was supposed to say. So in the 11th hour, I just <laughs> made it all text. And it worked. It worked. But in this game, I kind of made a point of not using text. And it sort of was a personal challenge to myself. And there were f a few little moments. And if you've played this game before or listened to this commentary, I'll, I'll be mentioning where they are. Uh, there was the, um, the, 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 the photograph of the Christmas uh, the Christmas family picture, um, there I forgot to record dialogue, there was a bit later, um, a couple of little places where it's just, you know, I, I had to fudge things, I had to reuse other bits of dialogue previously recorded, and it was very uh, restrictive actually, I, it was really hard for me to, to do with that because it, it did restrict freedom in terms of what I could change later on, like once it's recorded, it's set in stone. And that's something to really keep in mind if any of you out there want to um, pursue this, uh, do this crazy thing that I'm doing, it's, uh, it's, it's difficult, especially in a game like this where, I mean, holy crap, there's a lot of dialogue, I, I just went a little crazy. So um, I'm, I'm impressed that I managed to get um, all the dialogue down that I did. Um, but, uh, so yeah, I just, that's a little bit of uh, behind the scenes troubles for you guys. The lady playing Susan here, her name is Jennifer Astaris. I actually met her through Sandy Chen, the girl playing Rosa. It's sort of very, very incestuous, all these, these voice actors. But uh, Sandy was hosting some game industry party uh, downtown on the Lower East Side, and I met Jennifer there. And just in talking to her, I could sort of tell that she had done voice acting or acting or something with her voice because she just spoke really well. And it was very, um, I don't know how to quite explain it, but it was very stylized, I guess, the way she spoke. And I said, hey, do you do voice acting? And she said, yes, I do. And she was an opera singer as well. So I asked her, I said, hey, would you want to do a voice for my game? And so she said, yeah. So I, I got her card, I brought her over. And her reaction to the character description when I sent it to her, she said it was yummy. Uh, I'm not quite sure what that means, but apparently that means she liked it because she was willing to do the role. So that's Jennifer. One of the beta testers, when seeing this for the first time, was like, how come her TV doesn't have any reception? That, that there's, uh, I don't see the point. Um, you know, this is a, a New York thing. Uh, maybe those of you outside of New York don't get this, but um, I don't know. It seems that most of the people I know, as a rule, don't watch a lot of TV. Maybe it's just the people I hang out with. We like to watch movies. Uh, I know me personally, I've got a, a TV, I have a nice TV. I get zero reception, but I have a DVD player, and I like to watch movies. And that's how I live. And several people I know uh, live the exact same way. So this kind of lifestyle really isn't that unusual.